Okay. I think we can start now. Great. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. At, I mean, morning here, afternoon for some, and very early morning for others. Uh, my name is Lillian. I'm the scientific coordinator of FOGO, and I'm a NANO alumni. Um, for those who are not familiar, NANO is the NF FOGO Alumni for Network for Ocean. It's a network of former and current scholars of the NF FOGO training programs. And we are joined, to, uh, we work together in uh, research projects and we have other uh, initiatives. The objective of NANO is to keep uh, alumni in contact among ourselves and among our instructors as well, with our instructors. And to do so, we also have joint uh, initiatives such as research projects. One of these research projects is called NanoDope which stands for um, a monitoring for deoxygenation, ocean acidification, and productivity at selected sites. We have currently about 14 or 16 sampling sites in 13 countries, all run and coordinated by our alumni. Uh, one of the objectives of uh, the project is to increase capacity development and uh, possibilities of sharing knowledge and hence this uh, webinar series. So we invite members and non-members to give interesting talks of relevant matters for any ocean scientist nowadays. And uh, we invited Dr. Yet Yin Yi or Yen for us <laughs> to, to give this interesting call, uh, talk based in a um, a video that we saw from her on YouTube, a very interesting video on uh, uh, microplastic, microplastic analysis techniques. Uh, Yen, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Yen is a postdoctoral post researcher at the University of Malaysia. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Terengganu? Terengganu, yes, it's right. Terengganu, yeah. Uh, she has uh, res her research interest is nutri nutrient cycling and microplastics in temperate and tropical environments. She has been involved in water quality and biogeochemistry research in South China Sea since her undergraduate uh, final year project. After completing this, she went to complete her master's in Malaysian River and Nutrients and her PhD in ma marine biogeochemistry studying nutrient cycling in the South China Sea. She's currently a Global Challenges Research Fellow in collaboration with the University of East Anglia in the United Kingdom and Swinburne University of Technology, Sarawak in Malaysia, working on microplastics research. A key part of this project is to develop a nation, national microplastics monitoring capability for Malaysia and to map microplastic contamination levels across the country. Ultimately, this project aims to provide the evidence needed to underpin policy decisions on waste management and strategy. Uh, Yen, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I invite you to share yours. Yen is going to present for about 30 minutes and after that we, we are open for questions uh, for the next 30 minutes. All right. Okay. Um, hello, good afternoon from Malaysia and good morning or good evening for those who come from different time zones. Uh, thank you so much for taking our time from your busy schedule and come for this webinar. Um, and, those, and also thanks for Nano and Lika invited me for giving a talk here. Um, my name is Yat Yin He, you can call me Yen. I'm currently a Global Challenges Research Fellow working as a postdoc in University of Malaysia Drangano. The GCRF project that we are currently working on is microplastic research. Therefore, I'm here going to talk about the coastal and marine microplastic in Malaysia, past, present and future. 
just to give you an overall idea, uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about Malaysia's amazing and important ecosystem, our environmental challenges, particularly plastic waste, and then move on to microplastic. Uh, also, the GCRF project that we have been involved, we are currently involving and will be involved. And lastly, the Malaysia Microplastic Network. Just to give you a little bit about uh, where I come from, I work at University Malaysia Drenggano, uh, which is on the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia. This, uni this university is um, highly focused on marine science study. Therefore, we have another name like uh, Marine University. Um, UMT has own one research, uh, research vessel. The name is RV Discovery. Um, I was there to support the sampling uh, when the RV has the first trip to the offshore. Uh, UMT also own an island, Bidong Islands, uh, for the marine research, as a marine research station. Um, Malaysia is one of the top uh, 12 mega biologically diverse country. We have large coverage of the rainforest, wetland, mangrove, sea glass, and coral reef. Um, as you might know, we are part of the cor coral triangle. This is a very important and uh, amazing place for coral reef system. Unfortunately, we have some of the environmental challenge with one of the main one is deforestation. After that, it will give way for palm oil plantations. Some other environmental challenge include illegal, uh, illegal sand mining, um, efferents or waste coming from the industry as well as the aquaculture area. Not to forget, of course, the, the plastic waste. Um, these are the photos showing that quite a common view in Malaysia. Plastic waste on the beach, plastic waste in the traditional housing area, as well as plastic waste um, next to the river. Uh, in year 2015, one publication uh, has reported that Malaysia has been at estimated as top eight mismanaged uh, plastic waste country. Other than our own mismanaged plastic waste uh, system, we also receive large amount of the, the import of the uh, plastic waste from other country. Um, last year, um, I, think, I think in year 2018, since uh, China banned the import of plastic waste from other country, Malaysia become one of the main receiver of this plastic waste. Last year, mid of last year, Malaysia have, have received 100 and, 150 shipping container carry about 3,000 tons of the recycled trust. This has contributed even worse for the microplastic waste in Malaysia while we are facing this kind of critical environmental challenge. Especially, we have such an amazing ecosystem, but uh, the plastic waste is so easy to, to be seen um, in our coastal as well as marine environment. For example, um, on a sea turtle spot, hotspot island, it's not, it's not that difficult to spot some of the plastic waste. Uh, even though some of the fish cleanup activity has regularly have done on these uh, islands. So those plastic waste can be seen, for example, plastic fishing gear, styrofoams, and also plastic water labels. And even worse, the diver found some of the plastic waste in the seabed at the coral reef area. I think most of you must have seen some photo on social media showing that how this plastic waste has harmed the animals. For example, um, stomach of some uh, marine mammals or seabird clogged with the ingested plastic waste. So what about microplastic? What is microplastic? Um, I think most of you have listened um, and know what is microplastic, but here I just want to tell you what I know to be the definitions. There are actually still some debate about uh, certain elements of this regarding, for example, the upper size limit of microplastic. But um, the Europeans 
the European Chemical Agency has proposed that microplastic is a solid polymer particle with the size less than five millimeter as, and the microplastic is insoluble in water and is very resistant to biodegradation. Degradations. Broadly, there are two sources of uh, microplastic that is um, primary, primary and secondary microplastic. For the primary one, um, the primary one are those designed to be in small size, for example, the micro bit that you can see in the body scrub, face scrub, as well as some of the cosmetic product. Actually, um, if we're looking at the microplastic in environments, majority of the microplastic are secondary microplastic that broken down from larger items. For example, the synthetic um, fiber and also some of the particles from the um, plastic litter items. Um, however, um, Malaysia still relatively new in, in microplastic research. For example, one publication uh, in year 2018 published in Marine Pollution's Bulletin has stated that this is the first report about the microplastic in Malaysia marine water. This is relatively like recent, recent work. But in the Northern South China Sea, um, Chinese researcher has found that microplastic in the coral reef system as well as in zooplankton. So what about um, microplastic in Malaysia marine and coastal environments? For example, what are the sources? Um, how they are moving, for example, down to the coastal uh, and maybe eventually to the deep sea? What are the process inference? And also where they are going and where they are accumulate? These are all still remain like unclear for us. Um, since last year, we have received um, Global Challenge Research, research Funding uh, to do the microplastic research. We are currently uh, working on the Global Research Translations Award, G GRTA. This GRTA microplastic project was built, out, built on from the UEA Vice Chancellor GCIF Fellowship that I have won. Uh, and allowed me to do my segments at UEA and work with and collaborate with Andrew Mayers in uh, UK. For this fellowship, I uh, have got my sediment sample from Strait of Malacca and then dry it up and sent to UEA for further analysis. This was the method that I used to uh, analyze my sample. And this is the equipment that uh, I learned in Dr. Mayer's group. For the GRTA, uh, under the GRTA fundings, Dr. Mayer's and his team has built out five similar um, imaging equipment and sent to Malaysia to allow us to analyze the microplastic here. So basically, uh, these equipment allow us to capture 24, uh, 24 images from the separate uh, sections of a filter paper, which look like the right hand side one. And then it uh, then uh, reassemble into a whole uh, image of the filter paper, which look like the left hand side one. Um, the now red down will absorb on the plastic surface and return uh, this plastic to be fluorescent. So the capture image will allow the fluorescence particles to be identified and counted. After I finished my segments at UEA, I returned to Malaysia and worked for the GRTA uh, project as a postdoc as well as a project coordinator. So while I'm working for my research, I also provide the support for, uh, like in terms of analysis, uh, microplastic using the equipment. The GRTA uh, microplastic is part of the UEA GRTA project together with three other sub projects, which include um, child malnutrition, um, sustainable food system, as well as the uh, family literacy. Together with Swimbans at the East Malaysia and UMT at West Malaysia, 
this GRTA microplastic project aims to build up a microplastic monitoring capacity in Malaysia and to map microplastic across this country. Also, we wish to educate the community as well as provide some of the uh, evidence-based data for our policy maker. These are the current university and some of the MGO form as a Malaysia Microplastic Network. So for those who are working on uh, microplastic research in Malaysia, welcome to contact us and be part of the Malaysia uh, Microplastic Network. Uh, just to give you some idea how the uh, GRTA uh, microplastic project uh, work. As I mentioned, uh, this uh, project built on from my previous um, GCIF fellowship that I won. And then Dr. Mayers and his team has built out five uh, similar imaging rig equipments as well as prepare some of the basic uh, laboratory apparatus. Early of this year, 10 of these uh, analytical boxes has sent to Malaysia with three set of them are now at West Malaysia and two set of them now at East Malaysia. About a month later, Dr. Mayers came over Malaysia and has the first, uh, first time face-to-face -face meeting with our project partner, which, which is Swinburne University, as well as with our network partner. We also have two days training workshop uh, where Dr. Mayers was here to teach the partner about the um, imaging rig equipment. Later on, also involved me in teaching and providing uh, technical support in terms of uh, microplastic analysis using this equipment. Um, in order to support effectively, uh, effective uh, use of these equipments, uh, we also filmed a video manual and uploaded at our YouTube channel. So please check it out and uh, watch our video. Um, because of Malaysia is a multi-racist country and to best you of my uh, language skill, we came out two different uh, subtitles of the video in hope to help people understand better of the method. And we are now back in uh, laboratory as well as uh, uh, go out for our samplings um, now after list, list, listed up since uh, July. So we are now catching up all our samplings just before we have heavy rain during the monsoon. Um, my team is currently doing the research uh, in the river Drenganu until the near cost uh, of this area in hope to investigate the source to the sea and also understand about the transportations of microplastic. Uh, this will then link to the ocean's governance team in, uh, in North UMT for them to do their marine spatial planning for Kuala Terengganu district. Um, other than the research, engage with community, educate the public, as well as bring up the uh, awareness about plastic waste and microplastic are also very important as part of the GRTA project. Just before lockdown, um, our network partner managed to do some school activity, teaching kids about the recycling. We are also uh, currently working on uh, designing a plastic and microplastic corner in our institute gallery in hope to um, like aware public about this environmental challenge, environmental issue. Our, uh, so after the um, GRTA project, the next coming uh, GCIF project that we were working on is drinking water project. This project uh, will be involved the current partner which is the Swinburne University, uh, Sarawak, and then UMT, UEA, and we're also going to collaborate with WWF Malaysia. Um, just to give you the idea that um, the other sub-project, uh, the other sub-project of GRTA funded in Malaysia. So other than UMT and Swinburne University, University Science Malaysia also uh, working on 
a sub-project under GRTA uh, that is um, child malnutrition. Um, just before I finish my presentations, I would like to thank thanks again for Nano uh, inviting me for giving this talk, as well as for the POGO program that I have uh, joining, which is the POGO Standard Excellence POGO, yeah, uh, in year 2016-2018. These training programs um, has benefited me not only in terms of the knowledge uh, in oceanography or marine science, it's also helped me to develop my network as well as collaborations. I'm currently looking for more and wider collaborations to help the uh, environmental challenge beyond microplastic. I'm also working on marine biogeochemistry with my background of nutrient cycling. So bear me in mind and contact me if uh, there's any kind of the collaborations arise so we can see what we can do in the future. Um, here also want to special thanks to my supervisor in UMT, Suhaimi Suratman, our collaborator in the UK, Andrew Mayers, uh, Murix in Swinburne, Sarawak. Um, actually knowing Murix also somehow because of Pogo program. One of his students was on Hegoland while I was there for the Pogo program. So, Jessica introduced me to her supervisor, and we are now um, working together for a project. Not to forget Keith Weston, um, he, he was the one introduced Andrew for me, and also worked with me to build out the GCIF proposal um, and continuously until now. Thank you so much. And also, uh, not to forget the amazing team of UEA Research and Innovation Services, particularly GCIF project officer, Hana, Elitra, Annie, as well as Deborah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Yen. Um, a very interesting topic uh, and scary. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I saw this on your slides, but though I'm curious the, which countries are exporting the trash to Malaysia. If it's China and... It's here. Okay. Can you see? This is the statistic chat that come up. Uh, I think is the Greenpeace. Oh, okay. uh, the source is from the Greenpeace. Oh. Yes. We yeah. have we have quite many. The main one seems from the US. Last year, actually, um, we spotted this kind of illegal shipping container and our um, environmental minister has very strict on this and decided to return all these container back to their origin country. I think um, last year, last year, almost like 60 or 70 uh, container has back to the UK. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we have, we are open for questions here. You're welcome to use your mic if you want to. Just, uh, I would like to remember everyone that this has, it's being recorded. So if you're not comfortable, you can use the chat. Um, I have a few questions here from Dr. Keith Weston again. Um, yeah. So how aware are the general public of the problem of microplastics in Malaysia? Um, it really depends where the, the group of people come from. So, um, and even we are aware, actually Malaysia have sometimes in the past decided to have, we, just, to, just so you know, in our house, we do not separate our uh, rubbish. We bump into one and then throw it away. Uh, there was one time the government decided to have recycling uh, system but now they they're just not working i think people here they know plastic is a problem even like my you know my parents they are come from a very small village they know plastic problem but it's just hard to avoid when you want to use it even myself we hard to avoid about plastic it's so convenient for us so mm -hmm. we know it's bad, we just continue to use it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I think that it's a big part in government. And this is another question from Dr. X at Weston, and you partially answered already uh, how concerned the Malaysian government are with this, uh, is with this issue. 
And I think it's a good start that they're sending back these containers. Uh, is there any um, government initiative towards um, education of the community for you know, recycling and separating? I think the university, like uh, my university, we are, we are doing the initiative thing and some of the NGOs trying to push this happen. So instead of the governments uh, started to do some things, we, we are the ones started to show that this need to be aware. So I think some of the NGOs like WWF and Greenpeace, they keep on posting about the plastic waste issue. I think this is the things we are currently doing to make the governments aware this is already too much and it's already somehow harms the animals. But how much, I think this is also the questions for not only Malaysia, uh, all those researchers who are doing plastic or microplastic, we are still lack of the evidence about plastic or microplastic, how it's really harm to animals or maybe until human as well. Yeah, so we are now doing the research part and to show our government, um, to our governments that this is important. So this is a step now. Yeah, it's a two two way uh, thing. Um, I and I, I I'm not sure if uh, someone else has questions regarding uh, this part, but I'm a little bit curious about your actually the, the research. Um, so you what what's the frequency of your sampling with the research vessel? Um. So it really depends on what kind of the sample at the first and then where we are going. Mm -hmm. So let's say the river that I'm currently doing, um, every um, other month, I'm going to collect my sample um, in hope to cover, in Malaysia, we only have basically two seasons, which is the dry season and the wet season. Mm -hmm. So as long as we manage to cover these two seasons, which is good, but for the, Sea going samplings is also depends on the we, we own the research vessel which is so much better than the previous previous time because going to the sea is so painful, like so expensive. But now it's kind of like regular. Um but still um, we are mainly focused on the coastal area because mm -hmm. going to the far offshore is is still very expensive and we don't know yet, coastal area, how we will know the offshore having microplastic or not. This is another question. So doing the coastal first and will be the next things to do at the, yeah, at the sea. Mm -hmm. And then when you go out to the sea, you, you're sampling while you're collecting water for your microplastic sample and you run some uh, physical variables? Yes. Um, for the microplastic, uh, is, I think it's quite straightforward. Um, so for the river water, I'm using, I'm, I'm also learning at a learning stage. That's why I also sometimes contacted someone in maybe Jessica still at Avi. So sometimes because she is working in Una Group, which is quite handy for me to ask her some uh, maybe some of the questions and then she will refer to Puna as well. So for the river sample, um, we use the Newster net to do the tolerance and then um, for the sediments, we use the grab, but we are only like measure some of the physical parameter at the site. And then back to the lab, I will, I will do some uh, density separations, digestions, and then only use the equipment that provided by the UK to do quantifications. But also uh, for the identifications, it's a little bit um, hard for now in Malaysia because we don't we don't have the uh, microscope IR in UMT. I think the only one that I know is at some other university. So I, I'm, I'm trying to see if that is a possible to go to UEA again to do the identifications um, analysis. Yes. 
I'm curious to know if anyone who's watching us right now or, or later on what what is needed to to run this kind of analysis so if they don't have a research vessel but they can sample water on the beach or um so we, we have a question here from uh, dr nandini Menon. do you sample the mangroves for microplastics is there a difference in abundance and types between coastal and mangrove regions Sorry, um, Mano, which I saw one of the questions from her is the difference between microplastic and nanoplastic. All right. Oh, yeah, this one came privately, so maybe she, uh, you what, what, can, well, can answer that one. What was the question again? So, do you sample the mangroves for microplastics? And if so, is there a difference in abundance and types between I assume of microplastics between the coastal and the mangrove regions you sampled. Um, for the sample of the mangrove, I just got it back, but I haven't done any analysis yet, so I don't have any answer for this. Yeah. But let's say your mangrove area, we are also thinking about because uh, the river that I collected in nearby is the mangrove area. It's not the Turingano one, it's another one. So our hypothesis is like whether or not this mangrove area we're going to trap the uh, plastic when it's going from the river to the coastal area. So it's, it seems like a question for us. So I would expect maybe the river, the source would be similar to the mangrove. But I'm not sure if the mangrove in the middle, will they trap some of the microplastic from going out to the coastal area. So coastal area might have something different um, and also depends on where you are assembling. In Malaysia, the coastal area is it's a very nice beach. It could be the sources not come from the river, it can directly from the beach to the coastal. Do you have any preliminary results in terms of this uh, abundance in location to the, in the Malaysian coastal area? If there is a, a region prone to concentrate more microplastics? Actually, I think um, we are in, in my university, there are some of the researchers also doing microplastics. So we are at the stage kind of like um, mapping and we want to see where is the hotspot, but still we haven't done like fully for the, even for the peninsula of Malaysia. So everyone's like, crazy going out to do the samplings. I think maybe in next or next two years, we can have at least the idea where is the hotspot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's another question from the UK. How will the monsoon affect microplastic transport, especially getting it further offshore? Um, we have to see. One is the Strait of Malacca, another one is the South China Sea. Um, I'm, I did my PhD mostly at the South China Sea. So talking about the South China Sea related to the monsoon, um, in terms of, I'm also doing a, a uh, microplastic, uh, atmospheric microplastic. This is one of the very interesting questions that, is there any contributions from the uh, East Asia, which including the biggest mismanaged plastic waste country, China, because um, from other atmospheric study, uh, I mean the pollution one, they found that during the monsoon time, there are so many uh, contaminants and pollutions in Malaysia was coming from the East China, uh, I mean East, East Asia, which is one of them is China. So this is another thing which is interesting. And also for the sea, um, we have the islands, as I mentioned, we own an island. So during the monsoon time, most of us, you know, it's like they are shut down. We cannot go to the beach. And once the islands open, we, we open again, and uh, the volunteer go there to do the beach cleanup. They found some of the drinking bottles, like plastic bottle from China, and maybe some of the country at, at you know, East, 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 uh, East Malaysia, oh, sorry, East, uh, East Asia. So it seems like 
you know that we, we understand that this kind of um, plastic waste is like without border it can come from other country so yeah we at least for the plastic bottle is the big one it's not a microplastic yet but the big bottle plastic bottle there's some coming from china and for the pollution thing we have even evidence that uh it contributed from east asia as well so interesting to know about microplastic mm -hmm. there is one from jay oh, wait uh Kizaya J. By comparing presence of microplastic in surface water and sediment, how about the abundance variation? So in comparison to sediment and surface water, where you have a higher concentration of microplastic, I think. I have a quick look at my sample, uh, which is a real one and uh, um, I mean the sediments one. Um, because of the river that I sampling is really center of the it's a city of our district. So basically I can look at the um filter paper as has a lot of fluorescence spot. So they are not really that much of the difference for now, but I haven't come out until the end. Uh, I still have some sample to do. So for now, yeah, I, I would say in the water column, the microplastic is not that low as I thought. Really? Because everyone's taught the same things like sediments is the place that is sink down. But apparently in the water column is still some like significant amount. Uh, another question from JP Joseph Palermo. Uh, from the Philippines. Did you reach out to IOC Westpac for collaboration as there is an existing program on microplastic within the Southern, Southern Asian region? I think this is a quite uh, big thing currently occur in uh, Southeast Asia. I think I myself personally, I haven't reached to IOC Westpac, but I know my university, they are actively involved in IOC Westpac and they have already built out something. It's just like um, the microplastic might not yet because they. I think the Westpac is now, um, I think they're working on the physical oceanography things currently. So, um, because my first collaborations has started in uh, like with the UK and then I also went to Germany. So um, yeah, a little bit less connected in the Westpac part, but I wish that in the future um, this will be another thing to do because I really wish to have wider collaborations, not only like um, in Malaysia, the regional is also important. Yeah, I agree, it would be interesting and um, if, it, if we want we can uh, exchange emails later on. Uh, yeah, I think also because of we talk about, um, we have a, um, Lika and I have a quite like a quick chat about the co potential cooperations and also seems like Pogo are doing some things to help for the cooperations. So maybe not only the Westpac, but Pogo also another platform for us to do some cooperations uh, with some other country under the Pogo. Yeah, definitely. I think that our alumni would be very much interested and I already have some alumni reaching out um, looking for collaborations for uh, macro and microplastic research so yeah. yeah maybe there is a channel here yeah we, we can we can email later on to see what we can do definitely I think that's it for us mm -hmm. Okay, Yen, thank you so, so much for um, this great presentation. I have added to the chat the link for your YouTube chat from the Malaysian Network. Uh, I'm sorry, your, the video from the Malaysian Microplastic Network. And um, I'm later on will upload this to Pogo's YouTube channel. So uh, 
we can uh, always come back here and watch again. Yeah, thank you so much, Walika, inviting me to give a talk. It, it's my pleasure. Great, thank you so much, and uh, thank you all for joining us. Have a great weekend, and um, we we'll see you in the next Nano Webinar series, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.